right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by uh, Jessica Zempel, who is also in San Diego, just down the road. How are you doing, Jessica? Hello, thanks for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. And Jessica, so you were once upon a time a high-flying executive flying around the world, uh, you know, interesting places. You said um, to places I never wanted to go. So visiting lots of interesting places and you say in having an insane asylum like White Office and et cetera. But basically you had made it, made it really big. Everything was going fantastic, but you weren't happy. So um, so to, before we get into everything, I'm getting into your book and that, what was was that a was that a moment uh, over time, or was there any like sudden realizations that this wasn't the life that you wanted? You know, when most people looking at you, are probably going, "My goodness, like what a great life." I would say it was over time. Uh, I had always wanted to be an international business. I had a limiting belief when I was younger that to travel the world, uh, business was the way to do it, and um, I was raised. Uh, without a family or my family didn't travel. So I had this idea that that's how I would see the world. So I spent 15 years working towards that dream and finally made it. And it was so far off from what I wanted, what I thought it would be. And part of it was because I had traveled on my own. So I had opened up my perspective, my life, and I was seeing the world anyway. So I no longer needed a job to do that. And then also, I just never really knew what international business would be in the context that I was in it. Um, I was visiting manufacturing sites in the middle of um, small towns in Germany and the people were amazing. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't quite my idea of having dinner uh, in Paris. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I, I think that's always a, a case. I think sometimes it's funny, um, not to get off track, but it's funny when uh, you do business travel and other people maybe in your company don't and they're always like oh it must be so great and everything and to and there is a part of it and you're loath to tell them that actually 90 percent of it kind of sucks but uh but you don't want to say that because you don't want to be like oh you know feel like you're being oh it's terrible it's terrible that's right <laughs> yeah. um so then you wrote this book called shuck this way 44 ways to shuck open your shell and shine yeah a lot of s's there um and <laughs> yeah i know and we're going to talk about using your grit to grow so number one tell me the tell me the concept behind or the genesis of the book and and why you chose to call it what you called it and use sure. that analogy so my philosophy in life is that we are all a pearl and it's the grit inside the oyster that creates the pearl. Mm -hmm. And so I see that's true for all of us. It's, it's all the gritty experiences we go through that create our beauty. And so the other part of my philosophy is that we have these shells around ourselves that we close in times of fear, which can be totally natural, appropriate, and necessary sometimes. And the problem or the opportunity really is if your shell is closed too long, you really start to suffocate yourself. You're um, living in the dark, you are constrained. And in order to let that pearl back out, you've got to shuck it open, chuck that shell mm -hmm. open. And truly the only thing that opens somebody's shell is love. And so I am always talking about love, teaching about love and how to live and lead from a place of love rather than fear. So shuck this way is just some of the techniques I use with people. And I wanted to share them because, you know, I always say that what I do isn't rocket science. It's actually relatively simple. It doesn't mean it's easy. And I feel like the more people that have these tools of keeping their shells open so they can shine, share their gifts with the world, we're all better off. So that's what I like to do. I like to shuck the world. And this is the first um, book to really give the tools to people in their homes and work on yeah. themselves or even work with their colleagues or the people they manage too. No, absolutely. 
So when people are, when people are struggling, it's it's obviously quite difficult to see the um, the pearl forming, right? Because you're so into the the struggles that you're in, or maybe you're closed off. What are some of the what are some of the baby steps that you can take to start to maybe detach yourself a little and maybe just get yourself a little bit out of the constant day to day struggle and start to see things a little differently. Baby steps. Wow, great question. And I would say starting with just really slowing down is probably the best way to do that. When we're in reactivity mode, we are, you know, in constant motion and falling back on our habits and perspectives. And that's very limiting. So if we can slow down and really force ourselves to see things in different ways, I, I like to challenge people to see things in six different ways or more. And when you do that, then you start to like reframe the situation, right? You might be able to see the blessing rather than it just as a challenge or a horrible circumstance. And so, um, you know, if, if you lose an employee for whatever reason, it might be shocking right away. And if you take the time and really look for the blessings in that, then you might actually see that this opened up space for another person to show up that was actually a better fit. So slowing down would probably be number one. And number two I like is really not taking things personal. So everybody's operating from positive intention. They might not be operating in the same way that you or I might, John. And yeah. when you start with that kind of mindset, it helps to find the connection and the collaboration rather than drive people apart and close their shells, really. So, so really believing that everybody's operating from positive intention and trying to get curious as to what that might be. Um, and then the other person feels seen, heard, understood. And the same is true for you. So if you don't feel seen, heard, or understood, you know, put yourself out there, slow people yeah. down and make your desires known. So everybody can be operating from the same place. So those yeah, would be a no, couple, but there's a million more. No, absolutely. Uh, um, I love that. Just starting with number two and working back, but uh, not, you know, not taking it personally. Yeah. Well, and it's unfortunate. Like, I mean, the world is made up of individuals, so they don't act the way we would like them to, or show up the way we would like them to all the time. But I think that's a, that's a really profound point because I think we live in a world today where it's almost like everything is taken personally. You know, we become so, uh, you know, so I don't know what it is, but but so self-obsessed in many ways, but everything is taken personally. So I think that's a great starting point to, to try and stop doing that and maybe to, to stop putting, um, um, putting motives on people that may not be there. Yes, yep. Yeah. And the other one you were just saying, slowing down. Okay, so we live in a we live in a society today and in a culture where slowing down is counterintuitive to all the messages you're being sent. So how do you overcome this? How do you how do you stop this? Because everybody's going faster, more, you know, totally connected, never off, all of this stuff. But actually slowing down and, and you know focusing on yourself, that's that's almost counterculture. It is. And I hope that it's not uh, in our lifetime. But mm -hmm. um, so some small things people can do, John, is start blocking off some space in your calendar, because if you if your calendar can be filled by everybody else. And so if you don't have the space on there for yourself, then you're never going to take it. And so use that space. Uh, you could use it to go for a walk and then you might be thinking more than you're reacting. Right. And. And then you can kind of drown out all the sounds around you. Uh, maybe it's your health and wellness. If you're not getting out there and exercising, you're not going to be as productive and living your best life. So making sure that you actually take that space will help to slow down. And then you've got to start looking at how you're creating your own busyness. I mean, I, I remember when I used to respond to emails immediately when I'd get them and ask more questions. And all that would do is bring in more work um, for me to respond to. And, 
And I realized it didn't need to be done in that very moment. So really getting clear on, okay, is this really urgent? And removing our own false deadlines, our false sense of urgency and allowing for space. And what's beautiful, John, is I always encourage people to, to be now, as you're slowing down, look for the benefits that you're experiencing because oftentimes things actually happen faster because you can't make a baby in a month if you add nine women, right? And so mm -hmm. sometimes things just take time. And so by allowing for that space, that idea to evolve, that person to evolve, whatever it is that, um, and, and removing that pressure, you will be surprised at how natural things will flow, how naturally they'll grow. And um, it's, it's wild. So it's counterintuitive, but my challenge is there for all of you. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And it's funny you do, you, what you just said there a moment ago, because I think it's, again, it's so profound for people is it, you got to enjoy the journey instead of this whole idea of it's always, you know, you just got to get to the destination. And that's the world we live in today. It's all about, you know, in, instant gratification, get there now, now, now. Um, but but wisdom comes from the journey. It's often more you gain more wisdom on the journey than you do when you reach the destination. So true. You get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so what is it about? I mean, you say here about, uh, you know, uh, we said about uh, slowing down, but also you, you talk about giving yourself permission to dream big. Uh, I mean, I guess that's probably something a lot of people are afraid of, because as I said, they surround themselves in their own limitations and, you know, their own limiting beliefs. So how, what's the process of like actually breaking through that and giving yourself the permission to dream big? Oh, well, there's a few things to do with that. It's one, really work with yourself as to why you might be holding yourself back. What are you afraid of? Some people are afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. I actually find a lot of people are more afraid of success. Yep. And they don't really want to be seen in this world for whatever reasons, or they may have a family that has a certain lineage and they don't want to disrespect the family by like all of a sudden being more successful. It's really interesting, um, all the different ways we all show up and create our own limitations. And so um, I find that a lot of people play small. And so, um, so really reflecting on what does success mean for you, first of all, right? And really yeah. working through whether it's societal um, successes, right? Money, fame, power. And I'm not shunning any of that, right? But uh, mm -hmm. more, I think if you can identify what your successes are and just start playing around with them, it might not be clear right away just because of how much programming and um, different ways of thinking you've already been exposed to. So it's really just being gentle with yourself in the process. And the other thing, John, is surrounding yourself with other people that dream big. And mm -hmm. big doesn't have to mean you're building a billion dollar company. Big might be that you actually put a photo album together of your family member that passed away, right? That feels big, important, valuable. And so um, really surrounding yourself with other people that work through whatever fears they have and also that are going to encourage you rather than hold you back. Now, that being said, sometimes the, um, the naysayers are the ones that fire me up the most. <laughs> so mm -hmm. every once in a while, they're okay to have, just, just don't yep. let them hold you back. You gotta, you gotta use it for fuel forward. No, absolutely. Yeah, you know, exactly. Some of your greatest motivations have come from surprising, surprising places. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I love that whole, whole idea about, um, the fear of success, because I do think, and I agree with you, I do think that's a, that's almost bigger than the fear of failure, because as you said, you know, maybe I'll put myself out there, maybe I'll have to move, maybe. I, so we come up with all these fantastic excuses not to do things. It's funny, I often say to people, like, you know, they'll say, oh, I'm thinking of going for this job. And then they'll tell me, yeah, but the problem is it's here and I might have to do this. And I go, well, you haven't got it yet. So I really wouldn't worry about that. I'd actually go get the job and then decide uh, so and then good. decide how these things, you know, how much these things matter to you. But but your point is a really good one is that we we talk ourselves out of things because maybe there is something psychologically holding us back. Yeah. Well, the one that John I find really fascinating 
is people would rather hold on to hope for a dream than mm -hmm. actually go for it and not get it. There's some interesting human thing going on there. <laughs> and, and it's, it's just, I mean, it's no judgment, but more, I just want people to pay attention. Like, are you, are you afraid of losing hope? And you know that you can develop more hope and more dreams and more ideas. That's the other thing too, is I find that sometimes people think creativity is limited, right? Like I only will have one great idea. And that's so far from the truth. It's like, it, it actually feeds on itself. So the more you go for what is in your heart, the more you put yourself out there, the more ideas you're going to get, the more opportunities that are going to show up. And it's just, um, it's just incredible how it works that way. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's it. I mean, coming back to where we started, I think that's precisely it right now is I think people need to slow down, as you said, and, and just tune into themselves. I think they're going to be amazed at how much more capability they have and what they can manifest for themselves. And I always can kind of encourage people like to look back and just say, you know, um, not in regret, but look back and say, look at the things I've overcome and the things I've done in the past. I actually have a lot more going for me than I actually realize. Because I think sometimes people don't even realize um, what they've achieved to date. That I love that you're doing that with people because of that go, go, go and trying to get to that destination. People get to the next the destination and then go to the next one and the next one and they never reflect on everything that they've actually accomplished whether it is overcoming grit or mm -hmm. it is accomplishing these beautiful goals I, I mean it's one of the exercises i do with people all the time and i don't know if it's like this idea that it's arrogant to do that or what where it comes from but definitely take the time to think of your successes um, this last week, this last month, this last year, this lifetime. And you'll be surprised at how much there actually is. Yeah. And, and also look at the, uh, look at the tough times and what you had to overcome. And then you'll suddenly realize, wow, I'm way more resilient than I thought I was. That's right. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, Jessica, this has been fantastic. Like all of Jessica's information will be below this video, including the link to the book. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Well, thanks. Um, yeah, so I work with individuals and organizations on living their best life. I teach people how to move from a place of fear to love. And so for an individual, it really is going for your dreams and living the way you want to be living and in, in alignment with your heart. For organizations, it looks a little differently. And um, the same goal is true as living from a place of love. And what that means though, is showing people how fear affects an organization. So if you're not looking at um, the different fears and how that's contributing to the work environment. So for example, fear may be being more competitive rather than collaborative, right? So let's look at that and work through that. Um, fear is dehumanizing somebody, right? It's making them a resource or a label or whatever that is. Whereas if you actually truly see who they are, there's so much more magic that can happen, which will just ripple through the organization and also out into the world of how you're trying to serve the world. So um, yeah, so lots of different ways. And also um, I love writing. So there's different, um, uh, stories I share in my newsletter all the time, which is called Pearls of Wisdom. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And the book is called Shuck This Way, 44 Ways to Shuck Open Your Shell and Shine. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to say that after a few drinks, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, thanks again, Jessica. This has been fantastic. And thank you for listening. And I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.